Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now you may have heard that computers use binary ones and zeros, but you don't really know much more after that. And you might be thinking, well, how do you represent the number five if you can only use a one and a zero? And what about addition? And what about subtraction? Well, let me explain. As you know, computers use electricity. And one of the easiest things we can do with electricity is to turn it off and to turn it back on again. So you can see now it's very simple to have uh, combine that with binary, the idea of one and zero, on and off. So you can start to design circuits that are either on or off, and by being on or off, they can start to interact with each other. And that's the very, very fundamental ideas of electronic circuits. Now we, when we count, we count up to what they call base 10, because we have 10 fingers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then if you want to go beyond 10, we kind of like, well, let me mark that down. Let me create another mark to know that I have gone beyond 10 and you know, 20, 30, 40, and so on. And that's led to our current number system where we have a column of units, one, two, three, four, four, all up to nine. We have a column of tens and a column of a hundred and so on. So if I say to you one, two, three, you know that means three lots of units, two lots of tens, and one lots of a hundred, which you add that all up together is 123. Now binary is exactly the same, except for we're dealing in base two, not base 10, but now base two. So all you have is zero and one. And what happens is, is that you actually have to have different columns, but they're not going up in base 10 anymore. They're now going up in base two. So here is a table showing you how you write down the first few numbers using binary. The first thing to note that rather than units, tens and one hundreds, what we actually have now is powers of two. So you have one, two, four, eight, six, and eight doubles each time it goes up because that's what happens with a power of two. And zero is quite simple because it means that everything in that is zero. One would be just a one under the one. But now we've used up zero and one, so what happens? Well, now you have to say, move to the next column, just like we would if we go from nine to 10. Now we've gone to the end of our limit, which is one, so now we move one over into the two columns, so you get one, zero. Then for three, it's one, one. Then again, we move for four, so it's one, zero, zero, and now the pattern starts again, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, one, one. And with eight again, we now move over into the eight column and start the whole thing again. It's also worth noting there's patterns uh, on the vertical as well. Look, it goes in the ones column, you've got zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. In the two column, you've got zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. In the four columns, you've got zero, 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 one, 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 zero, zero, zero. And it goes on forming a pattern exactly like that. So as you can see, you can express any number as a binary representation. In fact, you can express any number, not only in base 10, but in other bases. And we'll talk more about that when I do a video on hexadecimal, which is base 16. Now, if I was to ask you to add up two decimal numbers, let's say, you know, 11 plus five, you would know that you'd have to add the one to the five in the units column, and then you'd add the one to the zero effectively that's there in the tens column to give you the answer of 16. Well, let's see how you do that in binary. So first of all, a few rules. When you add a zero and a zero, the answer, as you'd expect, is a zero. When you add a zero and a one, the answer is a one. And when you add a one and a zero, the answer is a one. That's all pretty simple up until now. But if you add a one and a one, you actually get the answer one zero, which is two, if you think about it in decimal, which really means it's zero, carry one to the next column, exactly as we would do in decimal math uh, mathematics. And if you add a one and a one, and there's also a carry from the previous one, so it's a one, 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 then the answer is, of course, is three in decimal. Okay, so that's one, and then carry one further on. First of all, let's add zero and one together. And we know in our heads already that the answer is going to be one. So in the one column there, zero plus one is one. Well, that's easy and everything else is zero. So that was a fairly simple example. But let's now go over to one plus one. Well, we've got a one in the ones column. We've got a one in the other ones column. So one and a one, well, actually that's a zero carry a one. So there's now a carry into the two column, and then the one carried plus the other two zeros gives you one. So it's one zero, which of course is two in decimal. So one plus one is two. And now let's get a bit more complicated. Let's add seven and six together. So we add the one and the zero. Well, that gives us one. We add the one and the one. Well, that gives us zero carry one. So now we've got the one plus the one plus the carry. So that's one carry one. 
And then we've got one from the carry plus zero plus zero is one, no more carry. So the operation stops there and that gives us one, one, zero, one. If you add that up, eight plus four is 12, plus one is 13. So seven plus six is 13. Okay, so you're gonna to need some practice to become really, really familiar with this system. But if you think about it, you're already familiar with it because we're already familiar with doing this in tens. You know, you get to the end of the column and you carry over into the next column and you carry over into the next column. It's exactly the same principle, but now doing in base two. But with some practice, you can become really familiar with it. Okay, so that's addition of positive numbers, but how do you do subtraction? In fact, how do you represent a minus number? Well, one way to do it is to use a sign, just like we have the minus sign in front of a number, and you could use one bit, the very most, uh, leftmost bit, to determine whether the number is positive or negative. So if it's zero, it's a positive number, and if it's one, it's a negative number. But there's actually another clever system called two's complement, and two's complement allows you to add positive numbers and negative numbers together and get the right answer. Okay, so the rules for two's complement are very simple. You take the number that you want in positive, so here we've got the example of seven, you then invert all the bits and you add one to give you the minus seven representation in two's complement. So seven here is one, one, one at the end. You would invert that, so you get one, 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 zero, zero, zero. And then you add one to it, and we just back down to doing our maths here. Zero and a one is a one, zero, zero is a zero, zero, zero is a zero, one, zero is a one, 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 one, zero is a one. And so minus seven in two's complement is one, 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 zero, zero, one. And of course, that's quite different to the seven that you see there on the top row. So that now gives us a way of representing seven and minus seven. So now let's look at this. If we add seven to minus seven, okay, or we have seven plus minus seven, you're gonna get zero, that's what we're expecting. So let's now add seven and minus seven and see what we get. So here we have seven in the representation of binary, minus seven in two's complement. And what we get is this, one and a one is a zero carry one. A one and the carried one is zero carried one. The one and the carried one is zero carry one. The carried one and the one is zero carry one. And then the carried one and the one is zero carry one. And that goes all the way along until you get to the very end where you still get a zero and a one and the carry one, which gives you zero carry one. And because it's the end, it just drops off and you lose it. And two's complement is designed to be that way. And then the answer, as you can see, is zero, 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 which of course is zero. Okay, so there we've proved that uh, seven uh, minus seven, or seven plus minus seven is equal to zero. Let's try another number. So let's try 16 and let's take away seven. So we're gonna do 16 plus minus seven. So a zero and a one is one, that's good enough. Zero, 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 good, zero, 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 good. Zero and a one is a one, no carry. A one and a one is a zero, carry one. Now you've got a one and a zero and a one, that gives you zero carry one, a zero and a one and the carry one gives you one, zero carry one, and then the same again at the end, the zero and the one and the carry one gives you zero and carry one drops off the end, and that's okay. And so now you've got zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, which when you add all that up, that's eight plus zero plus zero plus one, and eight plus one, of course, is nine. So 16 minus seven is nine. And so there you go, that's two's complement. So do try it out yourself at home, write yourself out some minus numbers. Remember, you need to take the positive number, invert it and add one, and that will give you the two's complement. And then you can add that to other numbers to give you the results. So my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You know what I'm gonna ask you to do. Please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe, please hit that bell notification icon, and please leave a comment. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.